Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here, playing Kerbal Space Program. This is a new game, well it's not a new game, but it's uh, a new series for me. And uh, in it I have a single goal, and that is to land a workable base on every single landable planet and moon in the entire Kerbal system. <laughs> but we're going to start small here, and we're going to start with a goal for a very simple mission, and that mission's goal is to do science. That's right, this is a new version, it's .22 of Kerbal Space Program, and in it you can do a career mode, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing everything in career mode, and I might even add some restrictions to myself to, to keep career mode going a little bit longer than a lot of people fear it will. But for this, I'm going to build a pretty simple craft here. I'm just going to going to put a guy in the capsule, launch it, and do a little bit of science and see what we can uh, see what we can find out about our universe. So let's go to the launch pad. Okay, I have no idea if this craft is going to do anything good at all. Um, basically, oh, you know what? One thing it's definitely got to do is not launch its... I'm going to turn on the SAS because it's wobbling on that engine there. Kind of crazy. I don't know what this here is. This is new. Having the capsule in the thing. I'm not sure what that implies, but I guess we'll find out eventually. Um, f before we do anything, though, let's uh, let's take a crew report. Get our five mitts of value and send that back to Kerbal Space Center. You notice the antenna raises. We send our data. You can't really see what it says here, but we got credit for it. And then the antenna goes back down. So we're going to crank up the engines here, and we are going to go. <laughs> um, the ship possibly a little over engineered, but hey, we're doing science, right? <clears throat> now these solid rockets are going to burn out, and I don't have anything to decouple them. There are ways to decouple things, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do little tricks like like burning, burning other things at them and, and things like that. We're just going to go up, see how high up we can get, take a look at the scenery. Pretty nice down there. There's a there's a runway down there you can't quite see. You can see the little the little uh, dirt of the runway. But we're heading up, and because we can't eject these solid rocket boosters, they're slowing us down a bit. But we are, we are accelerating away from the surface, and we're at 20,000 meters, which is pretty good. 25,000. We're a lot higher than I thought we would get. But, uh... Let's go ahead and take another crew report. It's worth another five mits of data. Sign, or it's five mits of data, and the scientific value is 3.5. I guess we'll keep that data. Why not? But uh, we're done. We have completed our, <laughs> our flight part of our mission. There's the southern tip of our continent. There's the mountains there. we got more mountains over here that have snow on them. Um, all these places are biomes, by the way, which means I can go to them and do science there and get science credits for that. I can also, this thing extended on its own, but I can also extend it, uh, at least, wait a minute. No, I have, I have electricity. Extend, there we go. Now it's going out. I can extend it on my own. Um, I'm in space, so tell you what. Let's do, let's do an EVA. We weren't really planning that. We're still going up. Jeb is in space. Look at that. I don't think he's going to let go. <laughs> uh, we can do an EVA report, though. Might as well do that. That's worth eight science values, so let's go ahead and keep that. We've recorded our observations of the situation above Kerbin's shores. See, now, if I was above some other part of Kerbin, this uh, science report would uh, keep that. Now, I can't keep two crew reports, but I can keep a crew report and an EVA report. Let's go ahead and get back in the ship before we uh, before we do. This is the map mode. Uh, we still got quite a ways to go before we're going to uh, splash back down. Um, we also, you know what, we have an electric charge. We might as well. Uh, how do we send our data? Um, review stored data. We only get 50% credit if we send this. Now, I'm curious, though, if we get 50% data. See, 8 mits, I can't, I can't, uh, crew report, override existing crew report, no. Oh, here's the crew report. It's 5 mits. I'm going to, okay, I can transmit this for 100%, so let's go ahead and transmit it. 
And now we, we used up our energy, so we can't do that. But you know what we can do? We can take another crew report. <laughs> uh, it seems they're very much in space right now. This guy seems to be mostly below us. That's nice. So let's go ahead and save that crew report. That's good. And uh, I guess now the only thing to do is to speed up time. Oh, the ship's throttled up. Even though we are not don't have any gas, but the ship's throttled up. So we're going to speed up time a bit until uh, we come back down. You notice that, that our orbit... Looked like we were going into the water, but we're actually going to end up behind Kerb Kerbal Space Center because uh, we went straight up, and so we were actually being thrown this way because the planet is rotating that way. But we're coming back down. We should probably get that parachute ready to go. I know I've hit it, but it hasn't come out yet because we're not low enough in the atmosphere. Um, when it does come out, what I'm hoping is at least some of this stuff gets pulled off the bottom of my ship, because I'm not sure what's going to happen <laughs> if I hit the ground with all this stuff. Normally, when I was playing the game uh, in sandbox mode, I would have a decoupler here, but uh, they don't give you those to start with. Oh, wow, we're going fast enough that our ship is on fire, and luckily, the fire doesn't actually do anything to the ship. Uh, like, say, burn the parachute. <laughs> but I have a feeling that things are going to get interesting uh, when we come back down here. And uh, I am using Wash's definition of interesting from the Serenity movie. Oh God, oh God, we're all going to die. Jeb doesn't seem to mind. He's happy. In free fall. Although we're not in free... Yeah, we are in free fall. We are basically at... Terminal velocity. Uh, the sun is directly overhead, pretty much. I think I think it was noon when we launched. Uh, we should be able to see our shadow down there somewhere. There it is. There's our shadow. And when we hit 500 meters, the chutes are going to open, or the chute is going to open, and then we'll see what happens here. This is going to be oh, well, pretty strong chute there. <laughs> I was kind of I was half expecting this to break off and keep falling. I've had that happen to me before in uh, sandbox mode. But uh, we're cruising down at 15, 14 meters per second, which is kind of fast. So I fully expect my engines to explode here. Not much we can do about that. But we did science, which is important. And... Oh, explosions! And now we're just sitting here on top of our empty fuel tanks. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn the SAS off. Let's see if we can flip this guy over. Now he's not strong enough. You can see he's trying. Oh, there we go. Wobble it, and it fell over. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. So let's go back to the Space Center. Let's get the credit for, for the science we did that we couldn't transmit, because we, we did our EVA report. Which really, which was really going to help the science guys figure out what to do here. So we are going to go to our our tracking station here, which is where we find Test Launch One, which, as we see on the map, is sitting uh, I don't know, a few kilometers away from Kerbal Space Center. Here we are going to recover this, and because we recovered it, uh, we got a crew crew report of plus five science, which is awesome. We get an EVA report of plus eight science. And then the, the uh, recovery of the vessel after a suborbital flight to find out, you know, we're going to find out some cool stuff about that ship. We got plus eight science for that. So we got 26 sciences, <laughs> science units uh, for that, which is pretty awesome. So what does that do for us? I don't know. I actually know. Um, what that does for us is it allows us to go into the Research and Development Center, which uh, I showed you at the very beginning. I just jumped in. Uh, this node is locked because we weren't able to use these parts because we did not have the science required to unlock them. But now we have 26 science, so I'm going to spend five of them unlocking that. And then not only does that give us access to these four parts, which we weren't able to use before, the decoupler is going to be awesome. This goo containment unit could be pretty awesome. Um, and then we get a couple more fuel tanks, a bigger one and a smaller one. You, know what? you notice I used four fuel tanks. I could instead use two of these, which will be nice because it will uh, keep the part count down, which is really important. Now, here's the deal. I uh, could research these. These cost 15, this costs 18, and this costs 20. I have 21, but I'm going to have a self-imposed limit of one science upgrade or one tech tree upgrade per mission. That's my, that's my goal to kind of spread, uh, spread this out a little bit. Um, and I'm, but I am going to pick which node I go to based on what it has. So, uh, so yeah, that's, I, I'm not going to look at them too much now. I'll look at them when, uh, when the time comes. 
But uh, well, that was a successful fight. So I think uh, I think we're going to end it here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to cut every mission, uh, make every video a mission or not, or or you know because some of these missions are going to be pretty long, some will be pretty short. This one was fairly short, but it's a pretty good introductory video of the whole series. But as we as we expand and as we get bases and stuff, the missions themselves are going to mesh into each other. So it's going to be hard to hard to do something like that. But we'll we'll take care of that when the time comes. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave a comment if you did or if you didn't. <laughs> uh, I'm Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later. <laughs> <laughs>